get your take on what's going on in terms of world affairs. Uh, the White House has issued a statement on this saying that there's no indication of a nefarious intent in the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. The ship involved in the collapse of the bridge is 948 feet long, uh, called the Dolly, a Singaporean flagged container. But of course, you've been talking a lot about the potential for wrongdoing or potential for foul play given the wide open border. That is why you have been so adamant. Why has the Republicans had such a hard time securing this border? The president says he's not going to take his uh, executive action. You know that. Well, we all have to stand together. Yeah, that's quite a pivot. And that was how things went this week within minutes of the cargo ship crashing into the Key Bridge, a Singapore flagged cargo ship crashing into the Key Bridge in Baltimore. Well, the right immediately went all in that the, really, the real reason wasn't clearly anything but an accident. No, no, it was something else. In this case, obviously the open border had something to do with it. But this is my favorite. Check out this post from perennial MAGA Florida congressional candidate and idiot Anthony Sabatini in Florida. Yeah, this is what he posted. DEI did this. We all know DEI is the new way of blaming the black guy for things, isn't it? I mean, we know this. So it goes on and on from there. You know, they went through all kinds of contortions to blame anyone, of course. Uh, the usual jabs of Pete Buttigieg for being gay. The, the righteous has lost their minds. So with so much going on, I thought it'd be a great way to get someone who sees the stupidity the same way I do and catch up on all the really ludicrous stuff going on in our country today. So you know what? Let's get on with the show. This is On Tomorrow's F.P. Wellman, and I'm your host, Fred Wellman. Man, welcome, welcome, welcome. As I mentioned prior to the break, I am your host, Fred Wellman. This is On Democracy with F.P. Wellman. I'm so glad you're here. It is, you know, I say every week it's a crazy week. It's a, it is a fucking crazy week this week, okay? And for that, I thought I'd bring in one of my crazy friends. <laughs> Cliff Sheck is the Daily Observer of Today's Politics on his own Blue Amp channel uh, and on YouTube. 2020 Biden campaign ad writer, CEO of Blue Amp Strategies, best-selling author, Jesus, man, Daily Beast contributor. Cliff, welcome to the show, man. It's fine, great to have you on the show. Hey, man. Uh, really good to be on the show with you. Yeah, so, man. Thanks. So, you know, I did the clip. You saw I did the clip about you know, the Key Bridge class, which is a tragic accident. It looks like six construction workers weren't able to get cleared in time. So then those may be the only deaths, um, you know, and immediately they blame what I think. What was it? DEI, uh, open border uh, infrastructure bill. That was a good one. I saw that one. <laughs> Something. I mean, what are you making of this? How is I mean, it not gun control and abortion? too? <laughs> Uh, look, look, I'll look. I didn't do enough clips, I don't think. Right? I mean, that's the next thing, isn't it? It's, I uh... mean, these people are such, uh, you know, I do. I mean, they're going to say they're stupid shit right now, and we're going to mock them as we deserve to. And you saw that Biden tweet mocking Trump. Like, people like it. you and me, I feel like we've been out there pushing the Swalwells and the, and the Plaskets and the people who are so good in the House. We've been changing the culture of our party where we rip them, mock them, and make them look like the idiots they are for these things. Yeah. My worry is more the future, because I mean, Republican elites are willing clearly to say anything, do anything, doesn't matter who it gets killed, doesn't matter what, what it gets people to believe. Yeah. And I mean, th insane, right? Like DEI caused the bridge. I mean, I, I don't know if you know this, I think DEI also caused the extinction of the dinosaurs. Yes. And I'm pretty sure that uh, it caused the Norman uh, invasion in 10, was it 1077? I don't yeah. know. I mean, these guys will just make up anything, say any stupid thing to have it fit in there. And that's why like you can't, which we're gonna get into here. Yeah. This is the reason you can't have Ronna McDonald McDonald, McDonald, old McDonald. You can't have her. Ronald you can't McDonald. have Ronald, old McDonald on your show. A, a famous clown, but well done. Thank you. I love that I messed up and it turned into a decent joke. Exactly. But like, they need to be over here separate from the sane people. Right. And they can't be allowed to cross that line to where sane people have real adult conversations. Yeah. Because if they do that, then they're going to infect. I look at it like a zombie infection. I really do. <laughs> they will infect our whole society. Uh, you, you know, and we will, I mean, democracy, democracy is based on enough people who have real information and can use reason. 
And they're breaking down the number of people who that is every day with these stupid fucking things. Well, so, and, and, and it, it does in fact, I mean, Cliff, I mean, Cliff, it does affect things, right? I, I saw another clip. I didn't want to run. I could run a million clips of yes, of the, this week. Sorry, this week. Yeah. Uh, of, of the of the stuff. I think later they had Eric Schmidt, my own senator, the junior senator from Missouri on one of the shows. And, and he was kind of twisting it to say because the, the, the setup was, well, uh, should we even trust the Biden administration? Because, uh, you know, a lot of people don't trust them now. And the reason people don't trust them because the weaponization of the DOJ and all. It's like so basically their lies of causing mistrust or uh, alleged mistrust. Right. And then they use that mistrust, you know, to say, oh, look, nobody trusts. It's their fault. It's really remarkable. I mean, honestly, it's like an, it's like a fucking abuser. Right. It's like I can't believe you're making me punch you. <laughs> you know, it, it is right. just the it's just a bizarre twist and is this weird bubble and, and also why they shouldn't govern. Right. I mean, we see see this translates directly to what we see govern. in the house right they can't govern because the problem is i think to govern you have to start with fucking truth right and and they all hate each other and they can't even agree on the lies that they're trying to sell and thus i mean do you think that's part of the gridlock in the house so they just this ridiculous oh my God. I you mean, know look think about it's like a big moron loop right <laughs> like you, you make up stupid shit that didn't happen hunter biden met with darth vader on the planet vulcan you know to do to accept money and then the end result is then they rely on that later they're like see that's why the bridge fell because Dar because hunter biden met with darth vader on the planet like right. it's their own self-serving crap right. and, and of course they can't govern because they're children. I mean, right. I honestly think if you want to understand, particularly the Republicans in the House, but the Republican Party, the MAGA faction, which is now easily 80% to 90%. Right, it's mostly, right. We used to say it was a, we used to say it was a minority. Yeah. Read Lord of the Flies, because I think that is your best example. You can, there are a bunch of children and bullies forming little gangs to pick on each other. Matt Gates. I mean, look, am I glad that Kevin McCarthy suffered so much? Yes, because he's a sellout and he's a piece of shit. But you know what? Like, the reason he was thrown out was not because of anything he was doing. It's because Matt Gates doesn't like him. And, right. and Marjorie Taylor Greene doesn't like Mike Johnson because Mike Johnson's the one who kicked out Kevin McCarthy, who was going to elevate her. So now she's trying to kick out Mike Johnson. I mean, they're a bunch of fucking, they're like kids fighting over a swing. And they're fighting over the same lie. And it's funny how the issue is they all won't back the right lies. I mean, that's the punchline of the whole thing, right? I mean, it, it actually goes to Ronna McDaniel or Ronald McDonald's, we may call her. <laughs> you know, Ronna, her big thing was she did she did perpetuate the big lie but in the end yeah. she didn't perpetuate the big lie enough or the right, right. way right i mean in the end that was her she cardinal sin enough right after doing she it for weeks she didn't she didn't lie enough and it goes back to what we just talked about the dei from the crash the, the lie of course you have the when, when you pile nothing but lies there is no truth and now you're arguing over which lie is the right lie and she ends up on nbc and it's funny to see these guys all all, all, all gnashing their teeth and, and clutching their pearls that she was kicked out of nbc so quickly i less than one scaramucci i believe right i <laughs> you know um yeah. About a third of a Scaramucci. Third of a Scaramucci. <laughs> you know. Well, I offered to do this. Lies. If NBC would hire me, and I think this is very fair, for Excellent. five million dollars. Oh my gosh! I'll be deal. the guy, and the name of my role is don't do stupid shit. <laughs> So when they're going to hire Megyn Kelly, I can go to them and say, it's going to cost you 60 million. Don't do stupid shit. When they're going to hire Ronna McDaniel, I can go to them and say, she's going to sue you and she'll probably win millions because of the dumb contract you were with her. Don't do stupid shit. And I, if they would pay me 5 million a year for that, they would save so much money. So that's my pitch to NBC. But I think uh, you can work at McKinsey. Jokes, I think that's where you can what? work. That's how you work at McKinsey. I think it's all they do, right? I just tell right. you nothing. I mean, <laughs> Beyond the jokes of the whole thing, you know, you're exactly right. I mean, and I'm so glad people stood up and I, you know, kudos. I don't know how much of it was planned, not planned, but kudos to the folks at MSNBC. I will give for the first time in my life, such credit to Chuck Todd, who I never yeah. thought I'd say those words yeah. because that was on Sunday. It was right afterwards. She lied again and wouldn't admit that she had lied about the election. His voice was shaking, like yeah. quivering when he said it. I think he, you know, he, I mean, I could rip him all day long for how bad he was at that show, but I think there was a hugely important moment because Chuck Todd holds a lot of weight around there. And when he, in that kind of quivering voice was like, I can't believe they put you in this position. I think that sent a single to, to some of the MSNBC personalities like pile on. And then right. people like you and me piled on, like I, I offered them just my advice that, that, you know, I mean, look, if there's open NFL 
correspondent positions, they may want to think about OJ and Brett Favre. I mean, there's, they've got some great options, yeah. you know, and everybody did their own versions of that to the point where it was untenable <laughs> and it needed to be, but we have to stay on guard because there's a lot more of these Ron and McDaniels out there who served Trump for an administration or two and have been cast off. And to me, the, the, the dividing line is if you're Alyssa Farah, what's her face, who, who I don't believe, if I'm correct, ever sat there and told the big lie, yeah. then I can accept you back into polite society saying I was wrong. And also, if you're out there saying Trump is a danger and you're on the right side of history now. But if you won't do that and you also were pushing the big lie at any moment, that is what led Hitler to gain power. I mean, the big lie, the stabbed in the back theory, this is the, one of the oldest sort of you know, tricks of the totalitarians. No, you cannot be allow, allowed back in polite society. Well, and to pay. I think, I think the, the line crossed where even if she may be just to have been a, a guest every now and then and, and to spread her bullshit, but when they decided to pay her $300,000 a year or whatever it was, over, yeah. by the way, mo and we also know for those of us in the business, those you know, obviously our viewers probably aren't in the business, and I, I've only learned about this business. Most of the people you see is these regular guests. It's funny how often, like my friend Rena Shah is accused of being being paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to go on TV. Believe it or not, the majority of the people you see going on these panels going on TV are not paid contributors in any way, shape, or form. So first of Overwhelmingly all, I can speak majority to it. not. Overwhelmingly, majority I almost thought of writing a book, Fred. I mean, seriously, yeah. about the stupidity of it. Between about 2002 and when I moved to Ohio, and then they were like, oh, we have to do a satellite link. We're not going to do that. Yeah. You know, so it, at that point, it was only when I, when I wrote a piece for the Daily Beast and went really big once or twice, O'Donnell had me on or whatever. But yeah. Between about 2002 and 2010, 12, around there, I must have done 75 to 100 hits. MSNBC, CNN, oh, fewer than that. CNN yeah. a few times. MSNBC and Fox a ton. I, I mean, don't make me apologize for going on Fox. That was dumb. I'm good. But the one thing I, I got paid, not a cent, hmm. and the one time I was a paid contributor, also ironic and hilarious, was in 2004 for Sinclair Broadcast. I was the liberal. I was the liberal who would go on and argue with everybody else. And I'm telling you, if you think I'm Ronna McDaniel or anybody else, I get paid $400 in appearance. Jesus. You know, in election night, I think they paid me something like two grand as a bonus. I'm not saying I didn't make any money, but I'm telling you is that whole year, if I made fifteen thousand or eighteen thousand dollars, it was something. It was not sure. hundreds of thousands of and dollars. It's work because just... you're running around like a chick with your head cut off. You got to be available right. all the time. It's funny if maybe the people who view the show notice. I don't put a lot of my friends who are. Uh, TV show talking heads on the show anymore because believe it or not, this is inside baseball for those because 99% I'll have to laugh. Matt, the producer knows like 99% of the time at the last minute, they got to cancel because MSNBC called or CNN right. called. Oh, we need you to do it right now. It's like, you really can't, God bless them. You can't count them actually being available. I think who was the last one we had? Uh, Shan, Shan Wu, who I love. Shan was great. And remember Shan did the interview in his, in his fucking car <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, because it was the only way he could pull it off on a schedule that we could put, you know, because that's the thing. So the idea that they come back and they give Ron McDaniel 300K and then she has no remorse. She goes back out. The, did not change her uh, uh, her story, did not change her talking points from being the head of the RNC to being yep. a paid talking head. Uh, but the same lies, the same bullshit. I think that's what really I, – I think people were mad. For me, You're right. we were mad up until she went on Meet the Press. And she wanted to meet the press, and it was just Ron on the, the RNC chair. And, and also I go back, and the, the second point, and probably the final one is, is, is what I think, Cliff, and I love your perspective on this, is this is a perfect example how the media, to include the ones we trust a uh, little, NBC and others, is they still don't fucking get that the no. world has changed, that the Republican Party is not a, a, a party that's just – you know, tight on taxes and believes in fucking freedom, right? That that this is a t authoritarian movement that doesn't believe in truth, doesn't believe in democracy, okay? Because I guarantee, right. just watch the comments in this video, are going to get at least three fuckers who come on and go, oh, it's a constitutional republic, you libtard. <laughs> you know, you know boo! You know, and it's just the same shit. Um, and so it just, to me, this entire episode just goes to, well, we always hire, everybody fights over the last... You know, the last party chair, Michael Steele was the last one. I think got a, a you know, the, the, every always, it's just traditional. You know, the White House press secretary goes right into the media. This is the way yep. it's done. But so, the, the world has 
freaking changed. And so when she came out, they said, oh, we're going to do the it's exact same playbook because there was a, there was a competition to get her. There was a, a food fight to get her on their network. So I don't know who else competed, but I know that was reported. I think Puck or something I think reported. CNN had some yeah. interest I yeah. saw. But I mean, I don't know how they don't learn. I mean, if well, you yeah. want me to, to answer now, I, I, I have a few quick perspectives on it. One I is- love it. I don't know how they haven't learned. They're not going to get any viewers. CNN imploded. The ratings have never come back. It was a joke. Chris Licht was a joke. Mm -hmm. The whole point is, is that far, the, the MAGA universe is not watching CNN. They're, they're, a lot of them aren't even watching Fox. Yeah. They're watching far right garbage, Newsmax, RT, propaganda from, you know, online propaganda from various places. So MSNBC or NBC, you're not getting them. If you want to get Adam Kinzinger, you know, or Fred Wellman type former Republicans, the way you get them is the same way you get me because we're all in the same place now. We may disagree on some issues, but we all agree on the, the paramount importance of democracy, of our constitution, of remaining a republic, of all these, of, of having freedoms, of everybody voting. Of, you know, there's a lot of things that we all agree on. And so you can have plenty of Republicans, put Kinzinger on there, or maybe right. he's already on somewhere. I think you he know, is, Put but... somebody like that right. and, and we're fine. But, but why would you pander to MAGA who's never gonna watch you anyhow? So that's the right. first thing. And the second thing I'll just say quickly is, you know, for me, I'm glad those MSNBC personalities did that. But back in the days when I did the Sinclair thing and all that, you know, I wanted to be on MSNBC. I wanted all that. Yeah. I've now made it my mission, which is I, if you see media as one of the biggest problems with where we are today, and NBC just proved it again, then I need to have the freedom to rip the living shit out of them on everything. <laughs> so my whole view is if they want to have me on sometime to talk about something, they can, but I don't want a contract. I'm not searching for a contract. I like spending eight o'clock at night with my two sons. I'm not interested in it. And, and so I have the freedom to say what I really think about any of them. And yeah. I like that freedom. That's so. a good point. Well, that's a great place to take a break. Say hi to our sponsors and we'll come right back. The older I get, the more I find myself wanting to be more intentional about the way I live, eat, and take care of my body. Mosh is a company founded by Maria Shriver and her son Patrick Schwarzenegger with a simple mission to create a conversation about brain health through food, education, and research. Now, Maria's father suffered from Alzheimer's. And since then, she and Patrick have dedicated themselves to finding ways to help other families dealing with this debilitating disease. Mosh joined forces with the world's top scientists and functional nutritionists to go beyond your average protein bar. With six delicious flavors, each Mosh bar has 12 grams of protein and has made the ingredients to support brain health, like ashwagandha, lion's mane, collagen, and omega-3s. They also have a line of plant-based protein bars that come in three delicious flavors of their own. But here's the best part to make you feel good about this company. Mosh donates a portion of all proceeds from your order to fund gender-based brain health research through the women's Alzheimer's movement. Now, why gender-based? Two-thirds of all Alzheimer's patients are women. Mosh is working closely to close the gap between women and men's health research. So, you know, Mosh bars are truly delicious. I have a Mosh bar every morning before my walk. It's a perfect way to kickstart my day. My favorite mosh bar is the peanut butter crunch. It's incredible. Now, if you want to find ways to give back to others and fuel your body and your brain, mosh bar is the perfect choice for you. Now, head to moshlife.com slash Fred. You'll save 20% off plus free shipping in your first six-count trial pack. That's 20% off plus free shipping in your first six-count trial pack at M-O-S-H-L-I-F-E dot com slash Fred. Fred. Thank you, Mosh, for all you do, and thank you for sponsoring this episode. If you're like me, you understand the pain of finding out what to wear each day. I mean, most clothes I have are uncomfortable, never actually the size I really am, and not to mention how much time is wasted trying to find a good outfit. And when you do have a good fit, you can only wear it for a few hours where you have to change for an important meeting or dinner, find a new outfit. Now, everyone wants to dress well at all times, because simply put, it's a confidence booster, even for men like me. Men's closets were due for a radical overhaul and reinvention, and Roan stepped up to the challenge. Roan's commuter collection is the most comfortable, breathable, and flexible set of products known to man, and here's why. Roan helps you get ready for any occasion with the commuter collection, which offers the world's most comfortable pants, dress shirts, quarter zips, and polos. You have never have to worry about what to wear when you have the Roan commuter collection. With gold fusion, anti-odor technology, you'll be smelling fresh and clean all day long, and on top of that, Roan is 100% machine washable, so you can just ditch it all in the dry cleaner or ditch the dry cleaner completely, put it all in your own washing machine yourself. You know, I'm obsessed with the Roan Commuter Collection. 
We're on the move a lot, whether it's I'm catching a flight or I'm going to a meeting or whatever. The Roam Commuter Collection has never let me down so far. The Commuter Collection can get you through any workday and straight into whatever comes next. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to head to roan.com slash Fred. Use promo code Fred to save 20% off your entire order. That's 20% off your entire order when you head to rhone.com slash Fred and use code Fred. It's time for you to find your corner office of comfort. Check out our sponsor, Roan. I hope you'll buy some outfits today. So other big news, <laughs> you know, which was a chuckle this week. <laughs> That's well, not it? Yeah, I know. It's, it, it's a freaking crazy week. That's why I wanted you on, just so we could like rap about all the crazy shit. You know, usually I just kind of pick one subject and go crazy. I'm like, like last week tonight. But this week, I mean, yeah. how can you, right? So I was up chuckling last night because the big RFK Jr. vice presidential launch walk rollout, he rented most of the, I think, a Coliseum in Oakland and nobody was there. I think it was two and a half hours, Cliff, it took him. You know, like all the networks were like cutting out because he just kept talking. And of all the people he announces, a woman named Nicole Shanahan. And I frame it that way because no one knows. I mean, it's hard to find pictures. There's of one important factor about her, which is why he picked her. Well, two. One is she was Sir, Sergey Brin's wife, so she yep. has lots of money to help him get independently on ballots. Yep. And two, she's attractive, and judging from his past experiences, <laughs> where I'm sorry, but we're just going to all tell the truth here. Yeah. One of his wives committed suicide, and her friends and others and numerous sources said it was because she found his little booklet where he kept a list of all of his conquests, including her friends, their common friends, Famous people. I mean, how, what's her name? Cheryl Hines married him after that. I, I never understand these things. He's a hollow husk of a person. And the one thing I can say is I met him at a client's conference doing some stuff for trial lawyers. I want to say about seven or eight years ago. He was charming. He was nice. He was, you know, but the one thing that it seems to be with all of these guys they have in common when they become part of what I would call the broader MAGA universe, yeah. denying vaccinations, denying that Russia is the aggressor in Ukraine, saying these crazy anti-Semitic statements, all the other stuff that RFK has fallen into away from when he was environmentally active and all the stuff he used to do is clearly he has, he, he has mental and emotional issues. Clearly, he was on heroin for 16 years. Jesus. That does things to you. I'm not going to claim to be a doctor, but the one thing the MAGA movement has, which is really sad, is we don't know what percentage of them, I'd love to know, are actually mentally ill. Yeah. I mean, people like forms of, of you know, paranoia, forms of, of just uncontrollable anger, you know, all these other things that people get diagnosed with this is what the MAGA movement attracts. Yeah. And that's how you get people that you used to look at and be like, they seem like a, a normal person and they end up on this, on the crazy train. So now he's got Nicole Shanahan. I think she's a lawyer, but, but, and she may be a very good one. So I'm not going to just, I have no idea, but that's not why she's there. No. She's there in, in, in any case, because she, she has a lot of money and quite, quite likely because he wants to better. I have no proof on that, <laughs> but I can look at his past history and say- I want to make it clear to the lawyers, I didn't say that. <laughs> no, but you're right. I said probably and, wants probably, to. Probably, in my I, opinion. I have no proof of it. I just want to well, be clear to any lawyers, I have no proof of it. I'm judging from his, from his past history of the fact that, look, he's done some things in the past that makes me- suspicious yeah. and opinion yeah. i'm not saying well it's it is like it is like trump right they, they'd like to surround themselves with the most attractive people um you know what trump constantly says that he always like oh it looks like they're out of a movie set right even man he's like oh just look at they came out of central casting it's like it's always this right. line about anyone he works with they have to be t t you know photogenic and te you know telegenic uh and, and she did bankroll yeah. his super bowl ad she's already put millions of dollars into his pack that's supporting his campaign and and from what i heard today i saw a report today saying basically the truth of the matter too is no one else Else would do it basically all the people he had those bright eyed tony robbins and uh was it you know he uh a oh, freaking aaron Rodgers. everybody approached like nah bro we're good because they I'm know they're gonna lose tulsi you know? didn't do it unless the yeah. Kremlin said to tulsi we need trump and he's yeah. gonna split because this is what people don't get he is not running anymore on his environmental record or on being pro-choice no, no he's running on being a gun nut and, and that's the third issue. The second issue is pulling out of Ukraine completely. And the first issue is his anti-vax nuttery. Any, any real survey will show you he's going to attract a lot more uh, Republicans. Hell, half our population doesn't even know who RFK was anymore. I mean, right. I hate to say it that way. No, they don't. But with the age level now and the lack of education, that's who he's going to attract. Yeah. He's going he's to take more from Trump. 
So in the end, I hope she does get him on some of those ballots because well, he will be out there yelling about vaccines and Trump will have to try to defend the fact that he got a vaccine. It'll box him in a corner. Good luck there. Yeah. And it really it's kind of like when you have a libertarian. I mean, I love when libertarians join my races. It's like, OK, because libertarians right. take, they take away Republicans every time. It's like, you know, it's that's funny. right. Take that five yeah. percent. Go ahead. You want right. you want to and, take go for it because Republicans love to say they're libertarians. They don't really do any research on the candidate. Oh, well, I'm not really a Republican. I'm a libertarian. Like, oh, whatever, dude. And same with him. Libertari and, 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 libertarian yeah. is, is the way of saying if you're embarrassed to admit you're a Republican. That yeah, you're a Republican. that's it. So and then, of course, you've got. Um, you got Trump. I don't know if you saw Trump actually started attacking RFK already on True Social, which is obviously that should tell you that's it. He's, telling them. Oh, he's just a far left Democrat. He's he's scared. You know, he's scared of yes, RFK because he, he knows because he can take a look right. at So he's got to paint him as a seen. Democrat. He's got to paint him as a Democrat. He can't. I think the last thing I want to talk about, just at least briefly before we get to the end, is 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 you know Donald Trump now selling Bibles. <laughs> You know, and I think I think we got a short clip. We'll run the clip of Trump when he was asked by the Christian Broadcast Network his favorite verses from the Bible and spending like a minute and a half talking about it. <laughs> and you said, I think last night in Iowa, some people are surprised that you say that. I'm wondering what one or two of your most favored Bible uh, verses are. Well, and why. I, I wouldn't want to get into it because to me, that's very personal. You know, when I talk about the Bible, it's very personal. So I don't want to get into there's verses. No, there's I don't no want to get into it. There's no, no I, verse that means I, a I lot just, to you that you think about or cite. The, the Bible means a lot to me, but I don't want to get into specifics. Even to cite a verse that no, you like. No, I don't want to do that. I mean, an Old okay. Testament guy or a New Testament guy? Uh, probably equal. I think it's just an incredible, the whole Bible is an incredible. I joke. Uh, very much so. They always hold up the art of the deal. I say my second favorite book of all time. But uh, I just think the Bible is just something very special. Anyway, so my favorite part of that clip is when they ask him, like, are you a New Testament or Old Testament guy? He goes, oh, you know, uh, I like I like both. I like both. <laughs> he has, I like the, he has I like no the idea. Testament. <laughs> the I kind of like, I like both those testaments. They're great testaments. <laughs> you know, you know what, what I wish somebody would do, and this is coming... This is coming from a non-Christian, but someone who went to Episcopalian school for oh, 10 there years. there you go. Well, there you go. Because I wish someone would sit there and, 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 and make him answer for the story and other Republicans of the Good Samaritan. Right. And explain their policy on immigration. Yeah. I wish they would make them explain about Jesus sitting down with the lepers and the least among us and the poorest and then explain their, their budgets. I, I really wish our yeah. media was a real media and would do those things because they have stolen and co-opted this persona of somebody who actually like was nothing like how they portray him to have been. Yeah. And but, it's funny. I mean, that's asking too much clearly because yeah. they can't even take a look at Ronna McDonald's and decide that she doesn't belong on the air without us having to tell them. Well, and that's so. the thing, right? And, and you see, I saw, I think I saw a tweet today that I was at Nigel Farage, one of these, one of the conservatives over in England. Oh, God. He's not going to go to church anymore because it's too woke. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> that's kind of the thing. I mean, the, the point of Christianity was like the ultimate wokeism, right? You know, feeding literally, I mean, could you imagine someone like, uh, you know, some of these mega pastors, you know, washing the feet of the poor or any of such, you know, it's, it's, and I think I saw, didn't we see a clip Joel this week? Joel Osteen definitely does that. Yeah, there you go. I don't know which go. jet of his he does it from, but one of the jets. I it's, can't even imagine being that cynical, that shameless, and that yeah, gross. But yeah, and, and you saw Charlie Kirk. It was a clip this week of Charlie Kirk uh, at one of his. I think it was Charlie Kirk, um, or, or was it Shapiro? No, it was Charlie Kirk saying that you know there's too many woke pastors and 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 trying to help migrants, and the way you help a migrant send them back to their country of origin, you know, it just. It's just bizarre. There's too many woke pastors who actually follow the, the, the Bible word. as it was written. Right. You know. The word um, of Christ. Yeah, funny how they're like constitutional originalists, but not Bible originalists. I mean, about to think, there's a whole series of it. There's a topic right there. <laughs> you, <laughs> you think know? the Trump Bibles will like look like his truth social post where he'll write stuff in? Oh my you know what God, I mean? He'll be like, you know? it's disinformate and misinformate that they're selling you. That I am bizarre. the guest person in the world. I mean- bizarre well you think and the interesting about that bible he saw which i think was like 66 dollars uh I, I, we should run a clip of that too 66.6 yeah is that you know i know well, this is that that was the punchline um is it, it includes lee greenwood's god bless the usa lyrics <laughs> you know and the constitution the and the, and the, and the declaration of independence it, and it's got an american flag and it, it's just fucking insane you know so it, he's it, now know? desecrated the flag by yeah. like humping it on stage yeah he's desecrated the constitution by in all sorts of ways right, telling yeah. generals he wants to shoot people in a crowd in a million other ways yeah he, he's desecrated the bible 
But, you know, the right loves him. Yeah, yeah. It's just in our grift. I mean, the guy's a constant grifter, uh, and it'll never end. But, you know, the thing about the thing about this show, Cliff, and you're new, is is I always try to at least leave on a positive note. I want my, I want my guests to roll out, you know, thinking, oh, or my, my, my viewers to... That we're, yeah. we're winning. And and the great news is this week. And we, we are. It. We are. We had this special election in Alabama and every for a state legislature. And it's funny how people are like, oh, who cares about state? State matters so much. But this one was interesting because Democrat Marilyn Lands won the special election for a state delegate seat in the suburbs of Huntsville. And the, what's fascinating with the district is Biden, uh, Biden only won half the votes of Trump in 2020 in this district. It's deeply red. And 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 Marilyn herself, Lands herself, lost a lax election. She ran on it by seven points. And and poor Polls up until December, her opponent's poll said they were winning by six points, and she won last night by 25 points. And she, and she ran. Performed Doug Jones there. Um, yeah, unbelievable. And and, and what yeah. did she run on? What did she run on? IVF and women's reproductive rights. That's it. That's basically the whole platform she ran on. Because as you know, Alabama, the Supreme Court just said IVF that right. you know frozen embryos are children. Man, I mean, what does that tell you, man? You're an operative at the state level. Well, I mean, it tells me, you know, we're going to have some decisions to make because I've, I've been preaching this for a while now. And, you know, I brought up Larry Sabato to you before the, the polling that has been out there. I don't know if they're pulling it out of their you know wheres I don't know if they're just terrible at it. It represents nothing close to reality. Um, it doesn't resemble reality. Every time we have another some, another proof, right? Oh, look, Swazi is either down a point or two or tied, wins by seven or eight. That very yeah. same day that Swazi ran, there were two races and almost nobody talked about. A state house race in Pennsylvania right. where we were, we were it's, it was a, a, a district where we should have won by 16. We won by 35. Wow. And there was a district where we should have lost with something like, uh, I think it was about 27% of the vote and we got like 46% of the vote and almost won an Oklahoma wow. state house seat. They're the Virginia state legislative races, a number of which we weren't supposed to win. We won them in 23. Kentucky's governor, we outperformed. Ohio right here. Oh, the abortion thing could go either way. It's very close. We won by 13 points. And then let's go back to 2022. I mean, my point is every single time they hand out these garbagey, stupid polls, every single time the New York Times and CNN, these morons, repeat them verbatim like they're truth. Yeah. And every single time there's actual humans voting, we outperform anywhere from seven to like 40 points. Right. So I don't know what that tells you. That tells me I'm pretty excited for, for this yeah. election coming up. And the best part is the best part of those polls everybody hates as of this week started showing Biden momentum. There's, you know, Biden's actually know. Biden's up by decimal points now, but he is rising. Trump is falling because people are getting in the game. People and we predicted this. People are going to start paying attention in the election year. People are going to pay attention when the primaries are complete, when we have nominees. Now they're like, oh shit. And the funny thing is all the fucking belly aching about, oh, Biden again. What they really are, but the average American is saying, oh fuck, Trump. And that's right. what's happening, and, you know? So, you and, know, and I'll, last thing, if I have time, I don't yeah. know, do I have time? Just a moment, yep. It, it, the simple thing is, as you know, and you've probably talked about it here before, Laura Trump taking over the, the right. RNC was the biggest gift because all that money, it, it's already been set up. It goes to Trump's campaign first, his legal bills, or his legal bills first, his campaign second, and then everybody else. So in all of these races, it, it, we're, we're overperforming, and that's where the decision has to be made because we can't play everywhere. Yeah. But we're going to have so much more money. Can we beat Josh Hawley in your state? Uh, you know, I think Sherrod Brown now with Bernie Moreno, absolutely. absolutely. If we work hard and do it, we'll hold on here. Yeah. But can we pick up and knock off Rick Scott and Ted Cruz? Between them, neither they've never won by more than two and a half points. Rick Scott's never won by more than 1.2% in votes three races. Time. Yeah, 10,000 votes last cycle. Right. So if we turn people out, Florida and Texas, if it, they are upended the way this Alabama race was, the Pennsylvania race, the Oklahoma race, Swazi's race, you know, all of this stuff, there's simply no reason why an 8 to 10 percent, you know, uh, direction for us means Rick Scott and Ted Cruz get their butts kicked. Oh and, you know, presidentially, I mean, it puts Ohio in play, it puts yeah. Florida in play, it puts Iowa in play. So, so honestly, we just need to keep doing what we're doing. We need to keep staying on offense. We need to keep hitting them hard. There you go. And that's, you, you beat me to it. Exactly it. It's not going to happen on its own. Uh, and I tell my viewers all the time, it's not going to happen back. We can't sit on our, our laurels. We can't pull a 2016. Let's be honest. We cannot assume we're going to win. We went, we run like we're 10 points behind. Always, always, always. And for you viewers, that means you get in the fight and you're local. We talked about Moms for Liberty last week of the show. We got Cliff here. 
you get in the fight, find a race, yep. find a way to help, write postcards, write emails, every campaign. Hell, I was just on the DNC's Call, website. Donate, yeah. knock on doors. The DNC has a great, you can go to the DNC's website and go to how can I, uh, there's, you would not believe I was just looking at this page the other day in a meeting I was on. The number of ways that the average American just plug in the DNC has their and their website where you can you can call, make calls just sitting from home. You can you can just sign up to make calls and help other voters. So you can get involved. But bottom line, what Cliff and I both agree on is we are winning, but we're only going to win if we keep fighting. And it's just like you know I'm right. an old, I would talk about it a lot, right? I'm an old soldier. Yeah, we're, we may win the battle, but the war won't be won till it's over. And so we still have and a war. That's the thing fight. is. Also, you know, I'd say quickly is there's, you know, look, any single one of us would take a, a win by one vote and walk yeah. away with it as long as Trump loses. Yeah. But there's winning and having Trumpism go on. And there's winning by the kind of margin, knocking off the kind of big name figures, the Lauren Boberts and Ted Cruz's and whatever, that does such damage to their psyche that MAGA falls apart. And maybe, just maybe. We get a we get a, the the remnants of a normal center right party again. Uh -huh. The only way that's going to happen is if we crush them. Agree. That's the only way. Tip, utter defeat. Well, I don't I want I want to let you go without telling. Where can our viewers find you? Where can they sign up to to watch your videos? Tell us where can they find you, brother. Well, you're kind enough to share the Blue Amp channel, but we are rebranding in oh. within a week to Cliffs. We're going to be Cliff's Edge, which All fits right. in a lot of ways. I like it. Um, but it's at C Schechter, C for Cliff, and S-C-H-E-C-T-E-R. Mm -hmm. You can find me. Uh, we're almost at 40,000, so please come subscribe. We do yeah. a lot of videos. You can find me on Twitter, where I am less often now, at Cliff Schechter. And because I'm an idiot and clearly I'm a branding guy that wants to make it as difficult as possible for you, um, at Cliff D. Schechter on, on threads. Uh, those are the three places where, where you can find me. And uh, I'll sneak my way back onto Fred's show again. I he, love he it. Doesn't Better than hanging out alone. I love to have company. So I appreciate you, brother. Thanks for everything you do. Thanks for uh, promoting our channel when you do. And uh, let's keep up the fight, brother. Well, that was a fun show, wasn't it? Cliff's a great guy. I love hanging out with him when I can. I've been his show a couple of times. It's actually the first time I've had mine, so we'll have to do it again sometime. You know, folks, we are in the heat of the battle. We're in the heat of the election season. Our general election for the president is set. Primaries are occurring all over the place. We've already got reports that there's Republicans running unopposed in some places across the country, uh, while in other places, we're putting up a fight. Here in Missouri, at the state level, uh, they've seen a dramatic double-digit increase in the number of candidates that will be running, Democratic candidates running for state house, uh, the biggest in decades. Uh, I understand my friend down in Arkansas, Chris Jones, has got a candidate for every single congressional seat. So there won't be any uncontested seats in Arkansas. So it's more than it's more important than ever, I think, that we help those Democratic con candidates and nominees and get the funding they need. As we've talked about before, you know, 120 of them or 126 Republicans ran with an opponent who barely had enough funds to compete with them last cycle. We want to see that end. That's why I'm so proud to be chairman of the Forgotten Democrats. We are really ramping things up. We had a great town hall last week talking about Ukraine with some great questions and answers from our audience that joined us. It was fantastic. You can easily join our movement. You have a lot of options. You can do a monthly donation, which we love, so you're a member, but you can do a one-off donation. We could use the help, and that money goes directly to candidates to help them run for office in a unique model that sort of crowdsources across multiple candidates who need the most. The most, the people who need money the most get it first, and that's what's wonderful about the Forgotten Democrats model. The easy way to sign up, you can join our email, just text FRED to 3377. Uh, seven seven seven. That's three three seven seven seven. Again, Fred to three three seven seven seven. Uh, or just go right to forgottendemocrats.org. We'll put the website up here on the screen. That's forgottendemocrats.org. Throw in some money, join our email list, join our movement. We're going to put you to work because we could close the election. I'm thrilled to be a member of it. And it's great. As always, you can find us right here on the Midas Touch Number. You can find us on the On Democracy podcast on YouTube. Our little channel is growing. We're throwing some great content up on there. So I'd love you to join us there as well. You can find me still on X and Twitter because that's where the fun stuff happens. When I say fun, I mean crazy shit. But I'm FP Wellman there. And of course, on threads, FP Wellman official on Instagram. I would love you to check out our Substack. It's fpwellman.substack.com. We are doing some great content there. We're putting our videos up there so you can get them early, uh, putting up some of my, my thoughts on, uh, on my experiences in the world as well as politics. So join us wherever you can find us. 
It's always great to have you here. It's always great to hear from you. I always say at the end of every show, make sure you leave a comment, leave a reply, say hi. I will try to say hi to you too. Sometimes we get thousands of them, but I love you guys saying hi to me on, on, the, on the comments on YouTube. I do check it out. In the meantime, as you heard, we're in this fight. We're in this fight together and we're winning. But the way we're going to win is doing the work. And the work comes from people like you stepping up locally, stepping up at your state level, stepping up your, for your favorite congressional race, whatever it takes. Get involved in our democracy and we will save it. I'm Fred Wellman here at the Myers Touch Network. I can't wait to see you next week.